This program is brought to you by Emory University. Is compassion a biological given? Are we born with some innate uh, tendency toward compassion? Or can it be cultivated, or both? There are dramatic differences between long-term practitioners and novices in their neural response to suffering during compassion meditation. The experts appear able to express high levels of activation in the amygdala, while the novice practitioners show reductions in the amygdala. And the amygdala has often been associated with distress. And it's as if the expert practitioners can endure um, that um, suffering and at the same time uh, uh, exhibit compassion and behave altruistically. Remarkably, just two weeks of training for 30 minutes a day can produce a measurable change in the brain and an increase in altruistic behavior. Over time, these moments of broadened awareness add up and build enduring resources of the person, useful traits like mindfulness, um, social connections, um, physical health. I feel like the picture that's emerging from the science here is that our, in a way, our bodies were designed for love in that the more we love, the healthier we become, the more flourishing at a physical level. My belief, the compassion brings inner strength that creates more calm mind, less fear, less anxiety. So that provides uh, sort of proper utilization of our intelligence. This compassion cultivation training might uh, help increase the sense of care for others, the willing, the wish to help, and actually giving your time to others and reducing the social anxiety and increasing this emotion regulation. And you mentioned the mother offspring context. I imagine, but no one has ever done the experiments, but I imagine that if you are a child of a mother chimpanzee who shares her food freely, compared to, and we have those too, females who hog all the food and no one can touch it, uh, that must make a difference in, in how that child uh, later is gonna respond itself. Certainly, a quite a unthinkable situation that I often find myself having to speak about compassion in front of His Holiness. <laughs> it's like lighting a match in a bright sunlight. Altruistic love is the wish that may all sentient beings find happiness and the causes of happiness. And that's go very far as we will see. Now, compassion is simply what happens to that unconditional benevolence when it encounters suffering. It naturally becomes, may all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Teaching the others to recognize that kindness of others you know, within this context of uh, interdependent world that we live in, where every bit of our comfort and joy and happiness comes from other, other beings. Uh, Recognizing that is very, very important. And that if we can do that, that leads then to the wishing others to be happy. And that the, that the more we have that sense of endearment that Matthew talked about, that, uh, that as the mother feels for her child, that, that the more there is affection or that sense of endearment, their suffering or joys will matter as. Nature did a cruel experiment during World War II when the bombings began in London and in other parts of Europe, they actually took the children away from the mothers who stayed in London, and they took the children out to places like this. Many years later, I mean, just in the last couple of years, they've done studies of people that either kids that stayed in London with all the bombing or went to places like this but did not have their mothers. And what they found was it was the kids who were separated from their mothers, even though they were in these safe environments that had lifetimes of depression, lifetime of anxiety, medical illness. These are very, very large differences, and if they, they're, they're, this is a very small sample, but if they persist, it might really suggest that the compassion training is doing something rather unique in terms of how people actually behave. Also spoken about how modern education 
lacks certain elements. It has such great resources for understanding the external world around us and the material world, but not enough resources for understanding ourselves, our own minds, emotions, and for building a sense of responsibility, a sense of inner confidence that comes from developing compassion. Understanding suffering and the causes of suffering and how the mind itself, that suffering doesn't just come from external sources, but from the mind itself. For that, we use the example of forest fires, how when a forest fire is raging, what can you do to stop it? And then we'd ask them, well, what, how does a forest fire start? Does it start as this raging fire? They say, no, no, of course not. It can just start as just a spark. So when it starts as a spark, that's when you can stop it. Similarly, with anger and other destructive emotions, you, you need to recognize them early, stop them just when they're arising. And, they, and you know, once again, I wondered, you know, are they really grasping this? But right after we finished that, one of the youngest boys came up to me and said, there are too many forest fires in my life. So how can we introduce secular ethics into the public sphere, such as public education, in a way that's fully vibrant, fully engaged, fully ethical, but that does not promote a particular religion and is not understood either as opposing or standing in the way of religion. Now it is quite obvious, compassion, a sense of closeness feeling, or a sense of positive concern for others' well-being is something really now need. Now the way promoting these the value, one, theistic religion, accept God as the infinite love, and then you yourself totally submission to, to God. That means reduce your self-centered attitude. A Buddhist method is a selflessness philosophy. Now there should be a third one, a secular way now. This theistic way or non-theistic way will not be universal. So yes, so I wish some kind of concrete sort of plan, uh, research on these sort of, the sort of benefit out of practice of compassion. Uh, now you actually implement it here. Uh, so now these are uh, real sort of the concrete basis of new curriculum to educate a secular way from kindergarten level up to university. So this is really wonderful.